Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome to Shifting Lanes. My name is Hanson. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for this video, you find me sitting in the 2021 Lexus LS 500 all-wheel drive. And I want to share with you my likes and dislikes about this flagship sedan from Lexus that costs $115,000 so that you have a better idea before you buy. And like always, make sure you stick around all the way till the end to hear my overall recommendations. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe and notification bell button so that you can be notified anytime we make a new video. And on to the review. Just like how there's the right tool for the right job, there's also the right car for the right person. In the case of this Lexus LS500, this is the perfect car for a very specific type of person. And that person's probably not the one behind the wheel, rather the one sitting in the back. And they're most likely wealthy enough not to just buy this car, but wealthy enough to have a driver on staff. This LS500 starts off at a reasonable luxury sedan price of just shy of $80,000. That's cheaper than the BMW 7 Series, the Audi A8, and the Mercedes-Benz S-Class. But thanks to the executive package and a bunch of other extra add-ons, this one has bloated to $115,000. And all those packages have transformed this car into not a driver's car, but a passenger's car. Something that you totally want to be driven in. Something like the Mercedes Maybach. The package that's driving up the sticker price is the executive package with Kiriko glass that costs almost $24,000, or basically the price of a base Hyundai Tucson crossover. And that package centers around the rear seats, primarily the right rear seat. Now, a traditional car's front driver's seat usually has at least a four-way adjustment. Nicer cars have about eight or 10. In this car, for the rear seats, each of these have a 22-way power adjustment. For all you engineers out there, just think about all the motors, the actuators, cabling, all the sensors, and also the effort to package all of that together. It's pretty significant. And on top of that, this right rear seat is also a recliner with a sliding ottoman. Not many cars have this feature. The cheapest one you can buy right now with an ottoman is the all new Toyota Sienna minivan, which I've reviewed before. So if you wanna see that, please click the link up here. But the party doesn't end at the ottoman. This also has a pretty extensive massaging feature and of course, heat and ventilation as well. And all those adjustments can be made via this seven inch touchscreen in the center console. This is basically like the command center because you can control the audio. You can also change all the settings for the seats, like the climate controls and also all the different adjustments. And if it gets too bright in here, you don't have to manually raise the sunshade like a poor person. You could do that with the touch of a button. And just one more way that the LS500 shows that this person sitting in this seat is the VIP is because of this little button over here. This basically controls the passenger seat. You could just shoo away that front seat so that you can get access to your ottoman. And what I like about this is that the headrest of the front seat completely folds down so that you have a perfect view of the road ahead from the back seat. So now that that's forward, I can recline and Oh yeah, this is good. Yeah, this is what it feels like to be rich. This is nice. And let's set the ottoman. One thing to note though, I am five foot eight, so I'm of average height, but maybe on the short side, but you can already see where my legs are compared to the front seat. So there really isn't that much room. If you're six foot tall, I think you'd be rubbing your feet up against the backrest of the front seat. So this shows you why the ottoman is only there for the right rear seat is because there's no driver in front of me. It would have been nice to have the ottoman feature also be on the left passenger side, but this car just simply don't have the wheelbase for it. Now you can get these fantastic rear seats by getting the cheaper executive package at a paltry sum of close to $18,000 or the price of a Nissan Sentra. But this LS500 has the more expensive executive package that comes with this special glass and these hand pleated door trims. Starting with the glass, this is Kiriko glass. And I love how Lexus has infused traditional Japanese craftsmanship into the trim pieces of this car. This is a traditional way of cutting glass. It's the same type of method that they use for Japanese vases and also sake cups. And then moving on to these inserts, this complex looking pattern isn't some sort of plastic molded piece. It's actually fabric. 
And what's most impressive is that this is folded from a single piece of cloth. It's exactly like origami, and it's another laborious piece of art found in this Lexus. From the distance, it certainly looks beautiful, and you don't think much of it, but when you look a bit more closely, and you feel the folds, and understanding the process that goes into it, you realize how truly impressive and how much effort went into making this very large piece. So in combination, the handcrafted glass and the hand pleated trim not only looks unique, but it also captures so much of that Japanese artistry and craftsmanship. Is it worth the extra $6,000? I don't know, you tell me. Overall, the rear seat experience and atmosphere is pretty amazing. The only issue I have back here is that the headroom can feel a bit cramped and I think if you're six foot or taller, you might find it a bit tight back here. If you're not the one sitting in the back, the experience in the front row isn't too bad either. The front seats actually have even more adjustability and also a massaging feature. You'll find the same impressive glass panels, door trims, and pretty fantastic leather seats as well. The steering wheel is wood and leather trimmed, and it feels very high class to the touch. And I like how this Lexus comes with climate concierge, which is basically a four zone automatic setting for climate control, which also handles the heated and ventilated seats. So you just set it and forget it. No need to tweak anything throughout your road trip. One of the biggest changes in the interior for 2021 is this 12.3 inch infotainment screen. This is now a touch screen. Now I've driven and tested a lot of different Lexus and I usually just hate this touchpad because this was the only way of interacting with the infotainment system and it's not very precise and it's very difficult to use, especially when you're driving. But now this is a touch screen so it's very easy to just adjust anything you want on this screen. Now looking ahead, I like the digital instrument cluster. It's relatively small screen compared to what you can find in newer cars, but Lexus managed to cram in all that they need into the more compact screen. The screen quality isn't the same as the infotainment screen, so the screen's refresh rate isn't very high, making some of the animations look a bit rough. Now looking further up, you'll find the heads up display and it's pretty impressive. This LS500 is equipped with a $1,200 24-inch heads up display. This is the largest heads up display that I've ever tested in any car. As for the rest of the interior, I really like Lexus's new design language. They've been able to streamline the interior so it looks more stylish without losing much functionality. And over here you have the volume and two knobs nestled together. I actually like this very much because these dials are usually placed pretty far apart, maybe because the front passenger is usually the one changing the stations. But in this case, given that sometimes the front passenger seat is folded away to make room for the rear passenger, it totally makes sense to configure it like this so it's within easy reach of the chauffeur. And finally, on the left-hand side, there's a camera button which accesses the panoramic camera view, so you can easily see a 360-degree view and a fly-around of your car. I like how this image takes advantage of the big screen real estate, so you can really see any obstacles with pretty good clarity. As for the driving experience, this is by far the most comfortable Lexus I've ever tested, and I've been in a lot of Lexus cars. This LS rides so smoothly over roads that it almost feels like you're gliding on the surface. Speed bumps don't feel as tall, and expansion joints don't feel as awful. This car is equipped with the $1,400 adaptive variable suspension. It's an air suspension, so you can adjust the ride height. So you can have the car sit a bit higher for better ingress and egress, but then it can sit a bit lower while driving for better aerodynamics and better handling. There's also so much sound deadening that any road or wind noise or any noise from groceries clinking in the trunk can barely be heard in here. It's a very peaceful space to be in. As for power, this LS is pretty decent. It has a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6 that makes 416 horsepower and 442 pound-feet of torque. And that's attached to a pretty slick shifting 10-speed automatic transmission. Now, 416 horsepower may sound like a lot, but this LS500, with all the bells and whistles, is a 5,000-pound beast. So 0 to 60 should be possible in around mid to late 5 seconds. And if you're judging by power-to-weight ratio, this feels like a pretty fast Toyota Camry. As for the exterior design, not a lot has changed with the exception of the much less busy set of headlights. 
You still have the expansive spindle grille. The profile is very long and low, and the rear end is very reserved with a nicely styled set of exhausts. Overall, the LS500 looks like a bigger and better looking Lexus GS, which has been discontinued. And despite the large grille, the LS500 does a pretty good job blending into the rest of society. In fact, I think it would be difficult to see this car and think, yep, that's a $100,000 car. It only becomes apparent when you look more closely that you'll understand just how much went into making this thing. But perhaps that's what Lexus was going for. This LS500 might just be for that wealthy person who has a driver who appreciates hand-built craftsmanship and very fine attention to detail, but also don't want to be in your face about their wealth. Personally, would I recommend this car? Yes, considering the amount of rear passenger seat features and comfort that you can get, this LS500 with the executive package is still cheaper than the competition. If you're well off enough to afford this car and spend, say, forty dollars to $60,000 a year on a full-time driver, then a $115,000 Lexus makes perfect sense. Well, there you have it. That's my review of this 2021 Lexus LS500. If you've learned something from this video, please consider hitting that like button. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification bell button so that you can be notified anytime we make a new video. I want to thank you so much for watching all the way till the end. This has been the Lexus LS500. My name's Hanson, and I will see you next time.